They tell you to look at the camera. So these people are making eye contact. They're a little imploring, you know, like, like, listen to me. There was just something about his face. It's quiet, quiet and strong. Let's see. And then, I mean, you want to know what the joke is. I didn't use him. Some of them were too young. I didn't want to use ones of children who were so young. Some of them were too scary. <laughs> Their narrative was taken out of their control when the mugshot is taken. The way people choose to empathize with you or not, when you have a mugshot as your kind of calling card, you lose some sense of control. And so I wanted to take those signifiers off and do portraits, and that was the first step. And then I matched them with saints so there are two sides. One is humanizing the mugshots, and one is humanizing the idea of the saint. It's my nephew's hands in handcuffs, in toy handcuffs. I needed to take a break. When I was studying the saints, it got so dark and so heavy. All of my art, almost my whole life, has been very heavily influenced by my Catholic upbringing. I was raised in a very strict Irish Catholic household in rural Ohio, but I was also raised in a politically liberal house. My mom and dad were always kind of walking that tightrope. But these stories that I was raised with and the violence and the drama of those stories that were just such an everyday part of my life you just kind of marinate in it when you're growing up Catholic and you never step back and look at these stories and how really awful they are, like really terrifying. A lot of these saints were tortured, murdered, or martyred, um, imprisoned because the way they behaved in the case of saints, the argument is that it was due to their beliefs, but the way that they behaved ran contrary to the powers that be at that time in the history of where they were. And a lot of people who have been arrested, a lot of people who are sitting in prison are in prison because their behavior ran contrary to what was said to be okay or socially acceptable in this time here in America. And those things change. I mean, marijuana is a really easy one to go to. Those laws are changing. Those people don't get that time back. It's a, a matter of location and circumstance and your story just gets lost, I feel like. And so I wanted to pull some of those stories, some of those faces out of the abyss, of the mugshot abyss, and the saints, pairing them up, putting real faces on them. So I love her, I love all of them. I have fallen in love with these people. This woman, I used to call crazy eyes. <laughs> Because, and I softened her up a little bit, but in her mugshot, she really looks like she's about to jump out of the chair and like knock you over and run away with something. <laughs> like she's got this kind of wicked, elfy, mischievous thing. Her name, her name in real life was Edith Eggers, Esther Eggers, Esther. And um, she was arrested for vandalism. And then the cop who came to arrest her, she beat him up. So attacking an officer and I, so I think she looks a little crazy in a very kind of mischievous, sweet way. I made her St. Catherine, St. Catherine of Siena, who's my patron saint, um, 
who was also crazy. She was, it's, it, you really need to go back and look at the saints with um, today's understanding of psychology changes a lot of what you see a lot. There have been books written about this, but um, like the anorexia, this idea of self deprivation in the name of holiness, a lot of that was anorexia. You know, it may have started off as being um, as sacrifices, but with St. Catherine of Siena in particular, it turned into full blown anorexia, including. Um, hallucinations and she couldn't, she couldn't eat. And she herself described it as an illness and died of a stroke at 33, which is sad. Also Jesus's death age. Um, this one, her name is Mabel. She was arrested in, was it 51? I think. And, uh, on her intake card, it noted <laughs> that she wore slacks, which I thought was an a particularly sort of humanizing little tidbit because it was a time when a lot of women weren't wearing slacks. She was arrested for tilt tapping and she would drop money at the register. And then when the clerk bent over to get it, she would grab the money and run. Um, and I just thought she looked so fiery and strong and her eye contact is so unapologetic. And I loved that about her. I thought that she matched well with um, the story of St. Barbara, who was um, a secret Christian. And one thing led to another. She was exposed as a Christian. And uh, her dad cut her head off. And on his way back home, he was struck by lightning and died. So she's the patron saint of explosives and lightning and artillery. And she's always pictured with a chalice in her hand because of her insistence on um, receiving the last rites, the sacrament, before she was murdered. This guy I called the crooner. And I think he looks like, I always say, I think he looks sorry, but in a like, sorry, I didn't know she was your cousin kind of sorry. I think he looks like trouble. I think he looks like a, you know, a 50s heartthrob. St. Sebastian is a pretty famous image even beyond Catholicism. We, I think most people are familiar with the imagery of him being tied to a tree and shot with arrows. Even though that is not what killed him, he another saint um, rescued him and brought him back to health, at which point he went back out and kept uh, proselytizing and was eventually clubbed to death. But he is frequently pictured as being really beautiful. And uh, I wanted to keep that like continuity and the representation of him in this one, this idea of being an object of desire. This is a young man. He was 23 when he was arrested, um, worked two jobs, was arrested for suspicion of burglary because he was seen visiting different pawn shops. And was so put together in his mugshot. He has on a, a button down and a suit jacket and he has a tie pin on which I just thought was so smart and what a shame it was that he found himself in front of a camera for a mugshot that day. There's something really strong and quiet about him. I used him for St. Christopher, um, which is the very popular imagery. The, what I chose for St. Christopher was uh, the holding a child on the shoulder. Well, you, he crosses the river. That was one of the ways that he was told by a hermit that he could serve God, serve Christianity, was by helping people cross this river. He carries this child across the river, and he's this strong brood of a man. He was a mercenary before he converted. And as he's crossing the river with this child, the child's getting heavier and heavier and heavier, and he almost drowns. And when they get to the other bank, 
he says to the child, like, you almost killed me. And the child says, I am the son of God. And the weight that you felt is the weight of the world. This woman, I don't know her name. She was one of the first and she's one of my favorites. And I think she's just got the saddest face imploring, you know? I mean, <laughs> not to put too fine a point on it, right? but whose sons are being crucified today? Yeah. Yeah. Who's holding that grief? Mm -hmm. And who are we turning to and saying like, help us do something, mm -hmm. you know, you in your moment of pain, in your moment of like shattering heartbreak, mm -hmm. help us do something. You know, we're, we're looking to them for, we're looking to mothers for more than it's their job to give us, I feel like. I use some really traditional Mary stuff in this one, like the floral border. And this color is one of the, I mean, the baby blue color is one of the ones that's associated with Mary. Um, the Immaculate Heart of Mary is supposed to signify her inner love and her inner life of pain. And if you take a second, like if you really just take a minute and think about the story of Mary, you know, by all accounts, she was like, what, 14? <laughs> And it just, I think of her life. It's very sad. I think it's very sad and beautiful. And she's throughout different ideas of my ideas of religion. I've never doubted. I've never doubted Mary for some reason. The Immaculate Heart of Mary is supposed to reveal her inner heart, her love and forgiveness for all of humanity, her love in the face of, you know, the worst thing that can happen to a mother. Uh oh. I'm actually going to start crying. <laughs> this is awful. Sorry, but they're awful stories. <laughs> they really are.